to Dove Church, to those in-person worshipers and those that are looking at us online or through whatever media outreach, we bless you and we welcome you to our service. And we thank God for you and we love you and we, we're praying for you. We read your comments, we get your, your information back and we, we ask you to in turn bless this house, seed into this house, it is good ground. And God will return it to you tenfold. And we believe for that. Amen. 
And we thank him for you. And continue to pray. Continue to write us, like, and subscribe. And let us know that you're watching. Uh, we appreciate you. And thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Everybody put your hands together. We, we, we looking so solemn today. I just want us to just... You're sitting around people that love the Lord. Amen. came to the Lord's house. It's a good place to be. It's a place of mercy and it's a place of love. Amen. And we're glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. And thank God for you. Amen. You ready for the word? Amen. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand or wherever your word is. And you need to be looking up here then I know you're paying attention. Amen. 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 Repeating after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word not only brings life, but it brings light. And so we rebuke everything on hindrance to the word or been, been sent on assignment. We rebuke every obstinate thing, every disobedient thing, and declare that thing come into Everything comes into the submissive will of the Lord Jesus Christ and submit to him. And so we thank you for the victory we have in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Today we're going to talk about a subject, something that hit my heart earlier in the week, and I've been talking it back and forth with Pastor Marcy uh, all week, and, and, and it's from the subject, what shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render? And as usual, I have to do a little background information and, and bring you into the lesson that we're going to teach for this time. And we're going to deal with Jesus and his ministry. And the one thing about Jesus and his ministry, it is he was always going somewhere so in scripture geographically where he was was always important say for an instance if he was in Dearborn it was a reason for him to be in Dearborn Amen. and if he moved to southwest Detroit there was a need for him to be in southwest Detroit but in route to all the different places it's as if he was headed downtown Detroit, in this case, Jerusalem. So Jesus is always headed somewhere, and each location he stops has a specific ministry. And that specific ministry, uh, be it known and unknown to some people, uh, uh, is, is economically based. Jesus came from Galilee. Nazareth, where he came from, his hometown, was in Galilee, a region. It's as if to say he was in Macomb County, outside of Detroit. That's, that's his region. Then he comes into Wayne County, which is Judea, where Jerusalem is. Why am I saying that? It's because each county has its own set of rules and its own economy. The taxes are different. 
Is it different? It was then. You pay different insurance in. Okay, no, no, let me help you because you, you're looking like you're confused, like I don't know what I'm talking about. You pay different insurance depending on where you, you live. And don't drive anything above a hoopty and you You're going to pay some steep stuff. I was going to send a letter to the Secretary of State of Michigan. The newly reelected one. <laughs> that my car is 7 years old. And when it was new, I understood. And, and, and my car got older and been repaired, been in the shop, out, new tire. New, I don't know why my yearly fee hasn't gone down. It, it. No, no, I'm not trying to rile you up in a political season. I'm just trying to, to talk some serious talk here. It was the same thing in the economy of Jesus. He lived in Galilee where it was cheaper to live. More farmland, people were landowners. But the closer he got to the capital of Jerusalem, the more taxes were required. And so where our story jumps off today is that Jesus messed around and left Galilee. And he was doing ministry and he entered into Judea. Everybody say Judea. Judea. He entered into Judea, and as soon as he got in Judea, the government jumped him. They jumped him. About what, preacher? Taxes. When you change regions, your first encounter with your new home and your new location is with How many know I'm right about that? I'm not going to ask how many of you have moved around. And what he encountered was two sects. Herodians and Pharisees. The Herodians were political influencers. They were politicians. Politicians. And... The Pharisees were the religious ones. They were the keepers of the law. And so the Herodians and the Pharisees decide to come together to jump Jesus. Because neither one of them liked him because he upset both of their economy. He upset their money. And you, if you want somebody to get mad. Mess with the money. Now y'all looking at me like you don't understand. Anybody ever got a short check and didn't understand what happened? Because the computer or something didn't put all your days in. Your attitude was not joy filled. Yeah. yeah, they look like here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was not joy filled. You went and asked, what, what, What's going on? In the words of my, 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 one of my grandbabies, I, I mention them quite often because I love them. I have a good time with them. And they're real and they do stuff that's so, so, so pertinent to what I do and preach and stuff. And my grandson. He, he, he can do all manner of stuff and it, it, just like when somebody messes with your money this is a good question for it he asked me uh, uh, two words what happened? <laughs> 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 yeah. 
And I want to tell them, you, you what happened? What happened? And sometimes you make a deer, he say, what happened, Poppy? <laughs> He's going to grow up, then I can beat him up. But, uh, but until then, I just have to just, just deal out. So, turn to Mark 12. You got the background to, to our story today. Let's move in. Y'all still here? Y'all still breathing? Y'all yeah. think y'all can make it through the whole sermon? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mark 12, 13 through 15. Everybody should be looking the scriptures up. Use your phones. You should have the Bible downloaded on your phone. If you don't have a Bible, ask for uh, Hold your hand up or usher or uh, bring one. And in this church, it's good to, we, we, the, the table of contents is a part of our Bible. <laughs> so if you can't find the book, it's, it's, it, we believe in the Bible and the table of contents is a part of it. Okay? So, so, so use that and, 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 and get to where you need to be. Amen? And then the scripture going to come overhead. Too. So we, we're trying to really double here. Now sometimes I fool them on Sunday morning and I say, don't put no scripture up, just put the number. Ooh. <laughs> but today I feel like blessing. Mark 12, 13 through 15a. When I say 15a or b in a in a verse, that means I'm only going to use that part of that verse. Amen. Amen. All right. Now here begins the reading. Is everybody there? Yeah. Or is he looking at the screen? Then they sent to him some of the Pharisees and the Herodians to catch him in his words. Or oh, they were caught. They, they joined together to trick Jesus. Amen. When they had come, they said to him, and, and this is how you know you're getting ready to get a boatload of stuff. When people come flattering. They said unto him, teacher, we know that you are true and care about no one. For you do not regard the person of men. When they say he did not care about anybody, that means he don't care what they think. He preaches what he needs to preach. And, but then they said, but teach the way of God in truth. Then, here comes the switch. Is it lawful to pay taxes, this is 15a, to Caesar or not? That's what they came to do, to trap him. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Okay, you, you, you think I'm, I'm, I'm 2,000 years back, but I'm really in, in, in 2022. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the U.S. government? Okay, okay, we all, we all on that page. Even if you don't believe it's lawful, stick around. They will show you it's lawful. Amen. And some of us, they have to bless us. They really do us a blessing. We don't like it, but they take it first. Because if they waited on us to come and give it to them. We'd be familiar with three initials real good. I <laughs> Some of y'all didn't know what was next So go on and say it with me I, I are <laughs> And trust me they're not coming after you If you only owe $50 They wait till they can get some real money all right, that's another message. 
Let's continue. High public approval kept them from laying hold of Jesus. He was too popular. So they knew the people loved him and the people reared him and they revered him. They were following him from place to place and crowds and throngs were gathering because of what he said. Oh, this is, I've never heard this before. Where did this rabbi come from? And, and so, so they said, we've got to stop him. We've got to stop him because Jesus, everywhere he went, he upset the economy in that area. He changed something. He made the people know what they had. Oh. Using a qu clever question, they wanted to make Jesus seem to agree with the Roman government against the Jews. It is always the method of the enemy to steal your reputation before taking your life. Amen. Amen. They want to steal your reputation before they take your life. He ain't nothing. He ain't never been nothing. And then they go on to proceed to kill you in whatever way they can. Never mind, he was all right when he was giving you something. But the moment that that stops, he ain't nothing. Don't get confused. People don't care about your reputation. But you must care about it. Enough to know it's all right and, and, and I don't need you to make my reputation. Amen. They, they work together to oppose Jesus. And 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 they 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 thought they had asked him a question that would trap him and lock him in, and he wouldn't be able to get out. And all the people would get mad and say, "Oh God, he's supporting this or he's supporting that." But Jesus is smarter than that. He's wiser than that. Let me read Mark twelve thirteen and fourteen. Then they go on to say, when they had come, they said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and care about no one, for you do not regard the person of men, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? Read that over again, because we need to get something out of that. Is it lawful? And the reason why that was a hotbed issue and a sore spot is because the Jews did not want to pay taxes to Rome, their oppressor. African Americans do not want to pay taxes. To the oppressor. So, oh, Pastor God. I know I'm being heard in other places, but you all believe a lie. So, the reason why taxes were a big issue, let's talk about, let's define taxes, how they had to pay taxes. And, 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 and you will understand why they stayed tall. Now this is moving from Galilee. Galilee didn't have all these taxes. But when Jesus crossed over Judea, then that's when the tax question became a biggie issue. Because we want to see if you are lawful. If you are a preacher and you do right. Lucille, do you pay taxes? And I want to tell you, in Galilee I pay taxes. And in Judea I pay taxes. Do you understand? These three taxes that the Romans did in Judea, it was three of them. The first was the ground tax, which was 10% of grain and 20% of all wine and fruit. So 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 20% or 10% they had to pay. Woo. 
And then here comes another tax that, that wore me out. And it was one day's wages, a denarii. It was, it was a poll tax. And here is the poll tax. I'm just doing this to, to blow it up and to have you look at taxation, how unfair it was. It, it, uh, it, it, if you were between the ages of 12 to 65 and 14 to 65, you had to pay the poll tax. How many of you? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to go on because. <laughs> How many of y'all in the bracket? Some girls sitting there right here. They just, she said, "Lord help her." She just bowed her head a little bit. <laughs> Baby, it's all right. This thing gonna get sweeter before it's over. It's... <laughs> Jesus cares. <laughs> just because you fall within an age bracket, I could go on a little bit further, but. Let's go on. This seemed to put Jesus in a trap. If he agreed the tax should be paid, Jesus then seemed to deny the rulership of God over Israel. If he said, don't pay it, just pay God. We can't tell some of y'all just to pay God. Because God will never see it. But if he said don't pay it, he would openly be an enemy of Rome. So he's in a tight place. We can almost see the Pharisees and, and the Herodians getting smug. We got him. And that's what Satan always wants to place you in the place where you it's too tight for you to wedge it loose. I got it. But with, with Jesus, you can always get out. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. And then I like Mark 12, 15b and 17. I like these first two words. It said, Jesus answers. Answer. Jesus answers. But he knowing their hypocrisy said to them, why do you test me? I'm reading it now. Bring me a denarius. Again, that's one day's wages. In a coin. That I may see it. So they brought it. And he said to them, whose image or picture and inscription is this they said to him Caesar I start to have everybody pull out a dollar whose face is on it Who, who's, whose face is on it Is your name George? <laughs> they said to him, Caesar's. And Jesus answered and said to them, Wow. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar and to God the things that are God. Who's, whose face is on the coin? Caesar. So he said, give to Caesar what Caesar asked for. So Jesus says, in, 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 in an opposition government, in, in a ruler, oppressive government, still obey. Come on. Come on. You need to obey for a number of reasons. But obey. But he said, 
You're not excused from rendering unto God what is God's. So Caesar gets his and he takes his. You have no option over it. What is the top of the check called and the bottom after taxes called? Okay, I know. Come on, come on, work. Act like y'all been by it. <laughs> How many has it hurt your heart to see the gross? And then you look at the net. And you go to the front door and holler, I've been robbed. That's if you've had enough deductions taken out. I'm trying to help you because we're going to talk real talk in here today. One denarius. And then he said, whose picture? He said, I want you to look at it good. Well, when I got old coin, I looked at it. Tiberius Caesar, the divine Augustus is on one side. And then Pontifex Maximus is on the other side of the ancient uh, denarius. And, and, and it means declaring that Caesar was the high priest of the Roman Empire. See. Let me go on. As Jesus was telling them to do right to the authority, he knew that that same authority was getting ready at some point to pierce his hands and to pierce his side and pierce his feet and put him on the cross, our Savior. They were getting ready to put him on the cross. But he said, do right. But do right to God too. So if you recognize Caesar's civil authority, you must recognize God's sovereign authority. And I don't know about you, but today I'm going to hang my hat on the one that has eternity with him. So I render to Caesar the things that are Caesar and to, and to God the things that are God. Jesus is saying that we are citizens of heaven and earth at the same time. And so you must do, do benevolence in both places. Woo. I know that's not good. Now go and do it. God's going to bless you in spite of it. You're surviving in spite of it. And if you take what's left and do right by it, it will multiply and you won't even miss what they took. Oh. What does render mean? Render means to return back to. Give back. What shall I render to God? In actuality, you cannot pay God. But that does not mean you do not have anything to render. Ooh. A song says, God has everything and everything belongs to him. With that thinking in mind, what can I possibly render to God? Ooh. Ooh. Number one, if he's going to give you Jesus, you can render your life to Jesus. That's a render. And if you've already been in Jesus, come back to him. Because he loves you. And he's doing this because 
of something that's real important. Now I talked about Caesar's image on the coin, but God's image is on you. You were created in his image. And when you are away from him, you are an alienated image. You're not acting like what you look like. Or what you should look like. So he sends Jesus after you to live, to teach, and to die. Because he loved what he made you to look like. So render to God what is God. God wants you. He wants you. No, you don't look like this one or that one, but he wants you because you are, you are made in his image. You're the image. I don't care how, how it acts or when it acts up, how the image acts. You, 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 you're made in his image. Oh, oh. Do you know how powerful that is? God loves you so much, he, wouldn't, he didn't send an angel for you. He sent his only son. And when the angels fell out of heaven, God didn't send a savior after them. But he did for you. He did for me. Because he loves me. And because he loves what he made. Somebody ought to praise him right there. He stamped his image on you. His image. Ooh. Number two. Render to God a kept word and a kept promise. Don't promise God something and don't keep it. And if you don't keep it, repent quickly and get back in his faith. Ooh. What kind of word? A kept word. A kept promise. Render to God a kept word and a kept promise. And I'm coming straight out of the scripture on this. Psalms 116, 12 to 14. And here begins the reading. What shall I repay to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. This is NASB, New American Standard Bible. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord and and may it be in the presence of all his people. Whatever I vow to do for the Lord, I will do. It's no signing on and jumping off. Until he says, you've met your vow. But we change our vow like we change our mood. Okay, I don't feel it anymore. So we don't do it. Aren't we glad that God's not moody? He's not moody. He don't have mood for him. He's not bipolar. <laughs> Some days he feels like a nut. <laughs> Other days he do not. You so moody, you happy as can be today. And tomorrow, what happened? Like my grandson's. What? <laughs> what happened, Poppy? <laughs> Surrender to God a kept word and promise. Number three. Render to him the praise of 
honor and glory do his name. You can't give him money. You can't pay him. You can't buy him off. You can't cry enough to get his sympathy. You can't say, woe is me. But the acceptable thing to God from you is the praises of your lips. Come on. It's the praises from your mouth. The praises of your heart. Giving him glory and giving him honor. And it's something we're not used to doing, but you need to get used to doing. God, I just praise you. Sometimes don't ask for a thing. Just say, I just thank you, God. I thank you, God, for keeping me. I thank you, God, for stopping me from being moody today. I thank you, God, that I don't have to ask what happened. Come on, come on. Let's try it real quick. Can you can you just praise God right quick? Yeah. See, some of y'all so relaxed, you can't, you know, you ain't even in a position to do it. You you smiling at me and I said, do something. I, it's an activity. It's a noun. It means do. It's a verb. It denotes action. It means do something. God, God says. So see, 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 you're not even looking at me and paying attention because your purpose is different from what I just am talking about. And that I said, praise God. Say something noteworthy to Him. You you know what you're doing. You're giving Him the, what 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 He asks you. What can I render to God for all His benefit? It, it, it is my praise and my worship and my adoration and my love God I love you I appreciate you I thank you I, I, I adore you for doing it for me I thank you for even overlooking my shortcomings and still blessing me some of y'all have a in spite of blessing going on I'm not worth it but I'm blessed I should be dead but I'm alive I got fired, but I'm still eating. Stuff got cut off, but I'm still able to meet my obligation. Is he worthy to be praised? Yes, he is. So what can you render unto God for all of his benefit? Thank you. Why are you too anything to say thank you? I'm required of little kids. If I give them a piece of candy after service, what do you say? Don't just come get it from me and walk away. I'm going to chase you down and take it back from you. My candy. Because you don't know how to say thank you. Thank you will keep the doors open. Keep the lights on. Keep gas in your car. Thank you will keep you not worrying about if, if butter is going to be too high to buy. <laughs> Just to thank you. No, you don't know what I'm talking about. So you think you ought to get it because you're cute. That'll work for a minute. And not a whole minute. After a while, a thank you will get you what nothing else can. So I dare you, say thank you. Thank you. Oh, some of them going to get it in a minute. Because they run around, why is it not happening? <laughs> Maybe because you don't understand two simple words. <laughs> I, I, I seem to be doing all right. I'm, I, I'm doing, I'm functioning, I'm doing what I need to do. <laughs> you haven't run into a thankless place yet. And when you run into that place <laughs> maybe a thank you will get you out God I thank you for being good I thank you Psalms 103 1 and 5 it says bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the Lord oh my soul and do not forget any of his benefits who pardons all your guilt who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with favor and compassion, who satisfies your years 
with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Come on, come on, come on. Bless the Lord. I like that last one. Especially as I'm in this years, these years in my life. I'm in my 60s, so anything that talks about being youthful again is exciting to me. So that your youth is renewed. Like the eagle. Come on. Come on. Come on. I, I got a few people in, in that in that bracket. And if God says he can renew you, that means some places that I was hurting, they won't be hurt. Amen. Some places where it took me a little while to get to do, I, I, I can do it a little better now. Amen. And it comes from telling the Lord, I bless you. Yes. Yes. And I thank you. Maybe lifting your hands can help your arthritis. Or, or, or relieve your carpal tunnel. Uh, yes. yeah. And tell him thank you. What shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits? God has everything. And everything. What shall I render? You're not getting it. To God for all of his blessings. God is everything. 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 Absolutely everything. All I can render is my body and soul. That's all I can give. Blessings to you today. You are in this house today. Or you're looking in on us by way of whatever social media. And we want to give you an opportunity to give your life to the Lord. He loves you today. And this is all for you. God loves you. You are made in his image. And he loves you today. If you've been away from him, come back. If you've never given your life to him, you can give it to him today. And all of us is going to say a special prayer today. Repeating after me, if you're in this room, you're not saved. You could say it and everybody else that's saved is going to say it. All is going to say it together. Go repeat after me and say it. Ready? Let's begin. Father, in Jesus' name, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Be my God. I repent of sin and I give you my life. I believe one day you died on the cross and were raised from the dead that third day morning. And on that confession and with this faith, I am saved to the glory of God. Amen. If you're in this room and you pray that prayer and you're giving your life to the Lord, just lift up your hands wherever you are. Say, God, God, I'm giving you my heart. I'm giving you my life. I'm talking to somebody. Sit, 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 sit. In the powerful name of Jesus. That's you. We're not going to ask you to do anything. We just want to pray for you receive you into the kingdom of God. If you're online and you gave your life to the Lord, find a good church that teaches. We're here at 4660 Military at the corner of Horatio. 
in the city of Detroit, come see us. But if you're here today, lift up a hand. We just want to pray for you. Make sure you cover. Make sure we receive you. Well, if you made that decision, you made that decision. Follow through with what I said. Remember, all you can give them is you. All you can give them is your worship. You can't pay him. He doesn't need it. Put your hands together and give God a good praise. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.